Back in the 1960s, preservation was spreading across the entirety of Britain's rail network. Steam engines were being scrapped all over the country, but there were those who were willing to save them. Others would just be repairing or restoring old lines that had been forgotten about or had recently been closed by the Beaching Act. There was once a man known as Johnny H. Russell, who used to work for a global company in his early 20s. But eventually he grew tired of his job and wanted to live his lifelong dream of owning his own railway. He had always been fascinated by the railways, and always dreamt of having one of his own. And he was able to purchase a good section of line, but it wasn't enough. He wanted to expand his railway and make it as if it was like a proper business. With some persuasion from the railway board, he managed to get a whole section of railway lines that ran from Scotland to a connection at Barrow and Furness in England. And the company was known as the Great Scottish Railway. By 1967, the Great Scottish Railway was the second biggest steam railway in the country. Of course, nobody knew better than us engines, who had all been preserved in one way or another, and did our best to do our work, just like we had all done before. There were eight of us at this time. There was me, the first ever purchased engine on the line. There's William, our main express engine. He may not have been the brightest engine to come out of the workshops, and to be gullible, but he is a hard worker and does his work with no trouble at all. Most of the time. We also have a heavy goods engine. Malcolm. Here we go! Here we go! Look sharp, you lot! Come along! Come along! He is sort of a perfectionist when it comes to his work, but he is a valiant worker nonetheless. That right there is Alexis. Being built back in 1956, she was the youngest of the fleet, and she had a tendency of having a bit of a temper when things didn't go her way. Oh, finally! That felt like forever! Blasted guard! Any longer and we would have been late waiting for that moron! We also have two pannier tank engines. Victoria, who runs her own branch line that runs by one of the many rivers connecting to the River Clyde. And then there's our older but quite cockier brother Charles, our station pilot at the big station. And finally, Iviana Rose and Liliana Eleonora. Ivy and Lily for short. Together, we are a great crew, striving to show the world the beauty that is preservation in full swing. Whilst we were proud of our work, however, there were some times where old conflicts of the past can still occur.
Wow, it's truly amazing. Every day it's always something new with you, Malcolm. Today I got to see you as a big sack of coal on wheels. <laughs> if you've been shit in coal since 11 o'clock this morning, you'd be dirty. Huh, that will never happen. I'm an express engine, Malcolm. I am designed for heavy passenger duties and only passenger duties. Not smelly goods trains. Despite the fact that many of your siblings started out with goods trains during the days of the Big Four and during the early days of BR. That's different. It wasn't even a challenge for us back then. Besides, it isn't dig. A digny diggy. Dingy fried? No, that's not it. Um. Dignified, Willy. Dignified to let an important engine like me pull smelly trucks. You've been talking to James again, haven't you? Uh, maybe. <sighs> God, will it make you such a bloody gullible? <clears throat> okay, well, listen. If you say you can manage goods as well as you say you can, how about I propose we swap jobs for a day? I'll take your passenger duties and you'll take me goods. Unless you're too dignified for the task. Huh, too easy. I'll show you I can handle trucks. Just you wait and see. Oh, trust me, old pal. You'll wish you never took on this bet. In hindsight, William and Malcolm should have handled the situation a bit more better. But by the following morning, the plan was put into action. Good luck today, Will. May the best engine win. Don't say I didn't warn ya. Ho ho! Well, you must be careful yourself. One wrong move and you'll hear the passengers complain for the whole journey. Knowing you rocking and rolling. Ha! We'll see about that. Are you sure you should be doing this, William? I don't recall you ever pulling trucks since being preserved here. I need to show that good for nothing Black Five that I too can handle goods, Alexis. Just watch me, I'll handle those silly trucks with Mike style and uh Gravy? Grace, William. Style and Grace. Yeah, that's it. You just wait and see, oh man, just fine. Trouble. That's what's going on, Sans. Trouble. Look sharp. I want no nonsense from you, hoarded lot. I want to show that Malcolm that I can manage you guys just as well as he can. So do keep in line, please. Thank you. Who does he think he is? We want Malcolm, not this big watermelon. William has no right to poke his funnel in here and push us around. The trucks were soon hatching a plan to give William a warm reception. But we 
William, of course, didn't notice a thing. Does it? Nice and easy now. Ha! Good luck with those trucks, William. One wrong move and they'll pay you out. Trouble? Nonsense. I've got them all under control. Whoa, whoa. What happened? Oh, blast. The trucks have slipped their brakes on. We'll have to manually release them before continuing on our way. <laughs> oh, how the mighty has fallen. <laughs> Oof! Uh, oops. <laughs> now look who's the disgraceful one. Thank <laughs> 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 uh, the galloping sausage for teaching him that one correctly. <laughs> 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 now to give credit where it's due. William did manage the trucks pretty well, for the most part. Huh, this is too easy. I have no idea what Malcolm was on about. I have proved I can manage trucks all on my own with no trouble at all. <laughs> Unfortunately, William was so busy thinking to himself that he wasn't checking the line ahead. Whoa, stop, old boy! We've jumped the red signal! What? No, no, no. Get, get on, on, get on! Get on. Stop! Stop! Blistering bike pipes! Phew, that was lucky. What are you playing at, William? Didn't you notice the red signal? Um. Oh, right. You better head back down to the last station and alert the station master what happened. One of the Express's regular stops was at the junction towards Victoria's branch line. William always knew to stop here, but Malcolm was so confident he was handling the Express well, that he completely forgot about this. Malcolm, watch out! Hey. Eh? Oh, great Stanniers! That 
was a close one. Malcolm, you silly engine. You've overshot the platform. Huh? Finally, you decided to arrive at last! Fifteen minutes late. Dear, oh dear, me. So much for trying to prove that preservation works well as a railway. <laughs> That's enough out of you, dirty diesel. Be off with you, or you'll find yourself in a nearby ditch. Uh, thank you, Gordon. No problem, William, my fellow cousin. But I must ask, what are you doing here pulling trucks? Well, me and Malcolm made a deal if I can handle trucks just as well as coaches. But it seems it hasn't gone so well. Hmm, I see. But you have proven a point, though. Huh? What's that? That trucks aren't as easy as coaches are. They are silly, noisy things who always play tricks on other engines who are not so experienced with them. I learned that the hard way myself. My point is that you shouldn't let your pride get the better of you over hard work. All that matters is being a really useful engine. Hello, Malcolm. I'm gonna have to give you credit, dude. Making a satisfying ride for the passengers. And the trucks are a bit of a handful to control. I'm sorry about all I said yesterday. It was silly of me, and foolish too. And I do apologize. I guess I'm sorry too. As much as it's been nice to try new things, I think I'd rather stick to my goods from now on. <laughs> oh, yeah. And by the next morning, the two engines were back to their regular jobs. They may still argue at times, but that's just how their friendship works, as it all gets sorted out in the end. But they never bring up the subject of switching jobs again, as they do not want to repeat the same thing twice. As for William, he learned that A, he shouldn't be listening to James, 
But also, whilst it is nice to try something new, sometimes it's best to stick to what you're good at. And I think he certainly learned a very valuable lesson in 